So the French open source LLM company Mistral has launched three different things. And in this video, we're going to understand all the three different things. The first thing starts with a very brand new model. The second thing is a tokenizer. And the third thing is a new Python library that would let you work with Mistral models. To start with, the first model is something that they announced through Torrent a couple of days back probably a week back but they have launched the instruct version of the model so a few days back mistral launched a base model mistral 8 into 22 billion parameter model it's an moe mixture of experts model but now they have released the instruct fine-tuned model of the same one so what is this model this model stays right at the top of mmlu so if mmlu is a benchmark that people still use that if you see mmlu you could see Mistral 7 billion parameter model here. Mistral 8 into 7 billion parameter, which is another mixture of experts model. Now Mistral 8 into 22 billion parameter model is right at the top. Doesn't take a lot of cost in terms of the active parameters because it is an MOE model. I'm still not sure why people compare it things with Llama. So that's, that's, a, that's a different thing. But you have got command R by Cohere and command R plus by Cohere and it's a very interesting choice of models that they've compared, uh, leaving the other models out. But if you just see the open models with open, completely open license or restricted license, you can see Mixtral 8 into 22 billion parameter model is a no brainer for anybody to use. Why is it so? Because this is a model that is fluent in a bunch of languages, including English, French, Italian, German, Spanish. The model has got good math and coding capabilities, which can be very well understood from uh, the benchmarks like GSM 8K and MBBP, Human Eval. In all these benchmarks, you can see, once again, I'm not going to take Llama to 70 billion parameter model, but when you compare it with Mistral 7 billion parameter model, which is still the model that I recommend to a lot of, uh, let's say, micro SaaS creators, because this is a model that is really cost efficient, doesn't require a lot of compute, and it can run on like 4090, 3080, and all the consumer grade GPUs very well with the quantized version, does really well. When you compare it with Mistral 7 billion parameter model, the 8 into 22 billion parameter model or 8x 22 billion parameter model has got 41.5. It's almost like more than like 40% improvement from the Mistral 7 billion parameter model thanks to the MOE architecture, which is sparse mixture of experts where 39 billion parameters are active one for one token. So every token goes through two experts. We've got eight experts. Every token goes through two experts and that two experts is what you see 39 billion parameter model. This helps you to maximize the knowledge or like from whatever the model has learned while minimize the compute that is required. So which means you can fit a lot, a lot of things in single GPU, a lot of different advantages that we have discussed about MOE in the previous videos. We've got human evil, which is completely rocking MBBP, which is like a Python test, which is completely rocking. You've got GSM 8K, uh, then you've got GSM 8K with uh, eight shot, and you've got math, the other benchmark. So in all these benchmarks, you can see Mistral 8 into 22 billion parameter model really is a lot better than the previous Mistral models that Mistral released. Once again, it is very surprising for, for me that they did not compare this with the Mistral large model that they've got. They did not compare it with the Mistral medium model that they've got. Um, I can understand that they wanted to compare it with only open models, but again, it's a very strange choice when you have got a lot of models like let's say Gemini, um, probably use chat GPT, uh, GPT-4, and a lot of other models that we have got like Quinn. So a lot of other models are there, but they've made a conscious choice to compare it with only these models. But when you compare it with these models as well, you can see that this model is a pretty good model. For example, if you take command R plus, which does not let you use the model for commercial purpose, even when you compare it with that model that has code 70.7 on um, GSM 8K five shot, while Mistral with 39 billion parameter active parameters, it scored 78.6. A similar thing that you would see for other benchmarks as well and this being a french company and uh, heavily invested in the eu european union region they've got a bunch of european languages covered and uh, you can see across all these european languages uh, they are pretty good in terms of the benchmarks the standard benchmarks for reasoning and knowledge you can once again see mistral 8 into 7 um, 8 8x 22 billion parameter model is way above uh, all the previous uh, mistral models on a lot of different benchmarks. There is an improvement in MMLU, 
there is an improvement in Hellas Wag, there is an improvement in Natural QS, Tri QA, and all these benchmarks. Now, the main thing that I am quite excited about this model is not because of the benchmarks. I mean, we know at this point that the iPhone released with, let's say, like a 5 megapixel camera, and the new iPhone is going to release obviously with 7 megapixel camera. I mean, maybe Apple would not do that because they are Apple, but you know, you get the point. Every new model is an improvement from the existing model. But what kind of improvements that they are bringing to the table is what I started looking into it. Not necessarily a 10 point improvement in MMLU or 20 point improvement in Hellas Wag. I mean, that is good. I can understand that is good. But that is not enough for you to make a name in the LLM world these days. I would honestly say that. Mixtral 7 billion parameter model is really good for a lot of different tasks. Now, what matters is when you take these models and you want to build agents. What matters is when you take these models and you want to build rag solutions, enterprise solutions, when you want to actually use it in real production use cases. And that is exactly where I think this model is going to shine a lot. Why? Because this model natively supports a function calling. So function calling, uh, simple function calling 101, a large language model typically responds you back in text. But can you make the model respond back in a JSON? What kind of JSON? A JSON that can actually call a function. So the JSON that is coming out of the model can be the arguments for a function so that you can call a function. For example, you want to make a large language model and that should call a weather API. So what kind of arguments that you might need? You might need the location, probably that's the most important name, like the type of temperature Celsius or Fahrenheit. So these are like two important arguments that you would need. So can you make the large language model output this so that it can call a weather API? It can for now you can extend this for email. You can extend this for a bunch of other things. And that is how truly you can put together a slightly more sophisticated and agent system. And this model, according to them, is really good, capable of function calling along with the new 64,000 token windows. So there are two things that I absolutely love about this model. One, function calling. Seems they're saying it is good. I have not tested it. The second one is the model is capable of 64,000 context window, which means for RAG, retrieval augmented generation, this model is going to be really good because it is going to have a high level precision slash recall when you use a lot of documents, give it to this model. So for RAG and also for function calling, this model might be good. Now that is a really good segue for you to go to the next section, which is to help support function calling. They have done two things. One, they have introduced their own tokenizer and they have also introduced Mistral Common, which is a Python library. Now, if you're not familiar with tokenizer, tokenizer is the most fundamental thing about large language models or anytime you do NLP, natural language processing or machine learning with text tokenization is the most fundamental thing. If you do not know anything about tokenization, but strongly encourage you to watch the latest video about tokenization by Anji Karpati, none other than Anji Karpati. I'll link the video in the YouTube description for you to easily find it out. So what happens is when you want to build a large language model, you take a lot of text, like take books of books from libraries. The first thing what you would do, you would not like use all the books. You would just pick one of the books and you would take one page of the book, you would go to one paragraph, you would go to one line, you would go to one word and you would read. This is how humans would read, accumulate knowledge. The same way, large language models accumulate knowledge by tokens. And this token is important in a lot of different things, like for example, how the model understands, whether the model um, learns different things, and also at the same time, this might have an impact in the cost later on when you have got a token-based pricing. So they have introduced their own tokenizer uh, here. And uh, also the reason that they are saying, the reason they have introduced their own tokenizer is to have additional special tokens. What kind of special tokens? Special tokens for different sets of models. So there are three versions of tokenizer. The first version of tokenizer supports the open Mistral 7 billion parameter model, the 8x7 billion parameter model, the MOE and Mistral embedding. And then they have got the I don't, do they have their own embedding? I don't know if it is a medium model or embedding. I don't, I don't, I don't, I couldn't recall whether they have their own embedding, my bad. 
The version 2 of the tokenizer supports Mistral Small latest model, Mistral Large latest model. The version 3 of the tokenizer supports Mistral 8x 22 billion parameter model, which we are discussing in this video. And as you can see, it turns out that the tokenizer can support function calling. You can see what are the available tools and what kind of calls it can make. I'm not going to go deep into the tokenizer, but you can see the the normal regular tokens you can see then you've got the tool calls available tools available tools tool result tool result so it makes this model to be a compelling case a compelling model for function calling that's what this actually does you can see here um, and uh, you can see like a lot of more information on token call tokenizer and uh, how function calling is being used here and you can see the example code and the next thing is that they have released a Python library that is called Mistral Common and you can do pip install Mistral Common and what is the reason? Once again, this library can help you with uh, first the chat template. Still, there are a lot of discussion with, you know, what is the right chat template for a large language model? Where should the system context go? Where should the user message go? Where should the assistant response go? How do you store the conversation history? This There is no standard uh, format people mostly started using the chat ML format that was introduced by open but this is an evolving case so mistral has coming up with their own thing by using with this helper function called mistral common uh, dot protocol instruct messages then they have got the request and tool calls where they have function and tool uh, classes and they have got their own tokenizer so the three things that mistral introduced today the one the mistral 8x 22 billion parameter model which is a sparse MOU model. So it has got 39 billion parameters active for one token for every token. And this model is one of the best, the best open source model, open source, open weight model that is available today. You can access the model according to them. You can access the model on their Leap platform A, um, which is their own developer API platform. The second thing is they have introduced their own tokenizer, which I've not seen a lot of people doing it, but this is really good, especially because they're dealing with foreign languages like French, uh, Spanish, which might have like different characters. Um, this might be really good step to reduce cost rather than using other tokenizers, which might be not doing proper tokenization for other languages. Like I said, if you want to know advanced about tokenizer, I would strongly encourage you to watch Andre Karpati's tokenizer video. The third thing is they have introduced a Python library called Mistral Common, which is helping you to do function calling and all the other stuff like leverage the latest tokenizer when you are using Mistral models. It's like a new library that can help you make use of the fullest of the Mistral models. Now to before I wrap up, the model is also available on Hugging Faces model up. You can straight away go start using it. But if you were to use the tokenizer, uh, sorry, if you were to use the function calling, it is little bit different from what you would probably regularly do so um, I would strongly encourage you to check the documentation but otherwise it's an Apache 2.0 licensed model completely open you can do anything with the model this should probably increase uh, the base model is already available and people have started fine-tuning it I would strongly encourage you to check out other fine-tuned models that are coming out of Mistral 8x 22 billion parameter model and once again thanks to Mistral for uh, advancing accelerating open AI development and uh, see you in another video. Happy prompting.